Here we go folks, welcome back, it's time for another Start in the Living prediction. We're finally back after another unexpected layoff, this time with the two postponements last week. I hope the team are fully motivated and determined to put behind them both the Kilmarnock result and all of the off the field stuff uh, that happened with Baldy last week. This is the first of the Champions League qualifiers, it's at home, it's a one leg tie against Reykjavik. We should be strong favourites going into it. Um, but there's no room for error given that it is only over one leg. Reykjavik themselves get beat 2-1 at home at the weekend. They currently sit second in the league. We did play them in 2014. Um, we put them out in the early stages of the Champions League qualifiers back then as well. So it's not a totally unknown opponent for us. But as I say, one leg, um, no room for error. I do expect us to get a wee bit of reaction from the Kilmarnock game um, and any off the field stuff for the team to put in a good performance and get through to the next round. Since the last game, obviously, Albina Yetis came in. There's been a lot of talk about the formation. Will we go back to 3-5-2? I think that's the formation Neil Lennon would like to get back to. Neil Lennon did say today, though, that Ayeti's probably not ready to start tomorrow, but he is in the squad. Um, I think that means that he can't go back to 3-5-2 because I don't think he's going to start Klamala. Um, Lee Griffiths is still out. Still out. Um, that's about all the information we got about Lee Griffiths today. So he's not in contention at all. That's why I think we're going to stick with the 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1 shape that we've been familiar with. And that might annoy some people because I know a few supporters wanted to see a lot of changes after the Kilmarnock game. I actually done a starting 11 prediction for St Mirren game that obviously never materialised that, that match. But um, I think I only made one or two changes and a few people were in the comments saying how can you only make one or two changes after that game. Um, you need to remember this is the team that I think Neil Lennon will pick, not the team that I think he should pick. So we'll start in goals as usual. I think Barkas will keep his place. He'll be the number one going forward now. I don't think there's any shock there. Scott Bain, I think he'll come in for, for cup games here and there, maybe in the Betfred Cup and the Scottish Cup um, later on as we go into the season. But Barkas is number one now. So good to see him finally get his Celtic Park debut. Um, at right back, I did think that Neil Lennon would play El Ahmed uh, in that game against St Mirren um, that, that ended up getting postponed because I think El Ahmed does let us go into the 3-5-2 shape and we've got the ball. Um, El Yunusi can move up the park to join Edward and we can go into that shape. Um, he does give us that versatility. Um, I'm going to go with Frimpong just because I think we're at home. I think Frimpong is still the first choice as it stands and because we're playing an opponent like Reykjavik who, okay, they shouldn't be underestimated, but we should comfortably be able uh, to beat them. I think he will go with the strongest team and his most attacking team, and I think that means Frimpong will keep his place despite his uh, poor performance at Rugby Park uh, a couple of weeks ago. Into centre-half, again, no competition there I, as of yet. A lot of talk about Shane Duffy, but Julian and Dyer will keep their place. Julian obviously missed the Champions League qualifiers last year, infamously, if you like, when Cluj put us out at home in that second leg, um, he wasn't involved. So there's no doubt he'll be involved this time. And I know we've, he was poor against Kilmarnock and he's had some poor games um, up against big physical presences in Scotland, but he's had so many brilliant performances as well. When you think about in Europe last season against Lazio, the games against Rangers, the cup final, the game at Ibrox, where he did stand up and he defended really, really well. So I think it would be good for us to have him in the team. Um, he's got a year experience in the team now and he'll help us going through this uh, qualification because we know how tough it's going to be at single leg ties there's no room for error so hopefully Julian can bring his best level um, and that will really help us compared with how we went into the, the qualifiers last season. I are alongside them at left back fully expect Greg Taylor there's absolutely no doubt about that um, I think it's fair to say the other left back I don't think we'll be seeing him anytime soon um, Greg Taylor will keep his place. Again, wasn't brilliant against Coleman. We need a better performance for him. Um, there's obviously speculation about other left backs coming in, and I think if Bolly does end up getting punted, we will get a replacement in. Um, hopefully, someone to challenge Taylor, um, not just to play to play behind him. Somebody to push him. I think that competition brings out the best in, in both players. So hopefully, we can get something like that done before the transfer window shuts. Uh, in the midfield, obviously a big big contention midfield. I keep saying it every week. So far this season, Scott Brown will keep his place, he's the captain. Callum McGregor alongside him, he actually made his Celtic debut in that away leg against Reykjavik in July 2014. He scored his first Celtic goal as well, um, so good memories about facing Reykjavik for him. He's come on so, so much since then, um, as I say, one of the first names in the team sheet every single week. That position in front of them, a lot of debate about Ryan Christie versus Olivier and Cham. 
the, the debate about whether Encham could maybe even play ahead of Scott Brown is one that I've seen come up in, in recent weeks. And Cham again linked with a move away this week and a lot of a lot of people on Twitter saying we should be starting them, not selling them. I think it even became a thing, start not sell. Listen, we definitely want to see Olivia and Cham stay. I just think Van Christie will keep his place, um, rightly or wrongly. I think he's a more natural ten than in Cham. Um, I think he's a bigger goal threat than in Cham and I think that is why um, along with the ground that Ryan Christie covers, I think that's why Neil Lennon will, will opt for Christie. I do expect to see in Cham at some point in the game. And now that we're finally going to get um, a run of games, hopefully there's no more no more hold-ups or postponements. Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday, um, two and three games in the space of seven days. Neil Lennon has that ability to use the squad there and I fully expect in Cham to start some games really soon. Uh, on the right-hand side, James Forrest. Again, a Yeti is, is maybe one who can play for the right-hand side. I don't expect him to, though. I think Neil Lennon sees him as a striker. He's said, he said as much already, and I think he wants to start him alongside Edward, and that would mean a 3-5-2. I just don't think it's ready in this game. And one of the things about the 3-5-2 is, if it does mean a Yeti is going to play alongside Edward, I don't see a place for El Yunusi and Forrest if a Yeti is up top with Edward. Um, I don't know how we fit all of them in. So... And I can't pick. I can't pick. It's not going to be James Forrest because James Forrest is actually the first name in the team sheet. He starts every single week and he doesn't get subbed off very often at all. Um, El Yunusis came here for a second loan spell. He'll be on big money. Um, so I don't know how we shoehorn all of those four. Edward, Ayeti, Forrest and El Yunusi into one team. I just don't see how it happens. But for this game, I expect it, as I say, to be 4-2-3-1. James Forrest on the right-hand side. Mohamed El Yunusi on the left-hand side. Um, again, as I said in the St Mern, uh, starting 11 prediction for the game that never happened, both of these uh, wingers, Forrest and El Yunusi, need to bring a much higher level of performance than they did against Kilmarnock at Rugby Park. Um, they've got to go and affect games, add goals, assists, um, open doors when we're playing against packed defences. So I expect to see a much better performance for them uh, tomorrow night. Again, as I say, we can't underestimate Reykjavik. This is a one-off tie. We've got to be at our best. Um, and I think attacking wise it's so important that El Unice and Forrest um, bring a much higher level up top Odson Edward um, no two ways about that one I'm excited to see him alongside Ayeti I think that's obviously something that um, Neil Lennon has talked about as I said before and I think that 3-5-2 formation is the one we're most fluent in it's the one we look the most dangerous in I've certainly came full circle from December January time where I thought I don't think we'll play 3-5-2 long term. I think when we've seen it, certainly in the domestic games last season, it looked very, very good. And that was with Griffiths and Edward up front. Um, as I say, Griffiths still out. We don't really know what's happening with him. We don't know where he's at. And having spent £5 million on a Yeti, I'm really excited to see the level of quality he can bring. And we know that Edward can make the players around him better. So that could be a really exciting partnership. I hope we see a Yeti at some point in the game. Um, and I fully expect that we will. And I, I've, I even think we'll, we'll change to 3 5 2 at some point in the game as well. As I say, El Ahmed could start at right back, and then that gives us that ability to, to switch to a 3 5 2 maybe when we've got the ball. But we'll see what team Neil Lennon goes with. That's the team that I think he'll go with. Like the video, comment with your own thoughts below. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you tomorrow for live reaction after the game. Cheers.